This video might lead you to your all-time comic grail or earn you a nice chunk of change. Let's talk flipping books. Welcome to the Paper Chase channel. I'm going to share with you guys nine essential tips if you want to either start or improve how you find buy and flip comic collections. Of course, real quick before we get into this, hit like because damn it, this video took a lot of time to put together and you're probably gonna profit off it. Okay, so you've probably heard buying comics that the smartest way to collect is to have the hobby fund itself. This is basically the simple idea of you find a comic collection, you get a great deal because you're buying it in bulk, and then you resell the issues that you don't want, and that gives you funds for the issues that you do want. Or you can just plain make money and make a business out of it. Even if you do currently do this, there's a couple of bits of information that you could take from this video and definitely use it to improve how you do this. So let's dive in. Tip number one, know your limit. This may take space. Storing comics can absolutely be difficult, especially if you are married, have kids, or if you're just playing limited on square footage. Now, here's the options to overcome this. You can either uh, get a storage facility, which is not ideal because it does have a monthly cost. You can donate the comics to Goodwill or charity. You could sell them to your local comic book shop. Or the most profitable one is get a bulk guy. You gotta find your bulk guy. Now, your bulk guy could be somebody who is basically just on a bigger level of operation than what you are. They could have an entire bigger online comic shop. They can even just have more square footage to store more books. But you wanna know how I found my first bulk guy? I posted bulk lots of comics at about $75 a short box on Facebook Marketplace. And I promise you, if you do this, these larger operations will start to come out of the woodworks. Now, keep in mind, it may take a few weeks of some overstock kind of sitting around your house here and there. But if you can be patient enough, eventually you will find a bulk person and hopefully you create a relationship with this person where this could be an ongoing thing. Number two, know your overflow. What this means is basically the books that are going to spill over into your bulk, the stuff that we literally just talked about the last tip. To figure out what your overflow and what your bulk is gonna be, you need to figure out what your methods of selling this stuff are. Is it Instagram, eBay, whatnot? Maybe you just wanna sell graded key comic books. What is the smallest value of comic that you want to sell? And anything that doesn't meet that dollar amount, I would put over into a separate bulk section that you wanna try to get rid of. This is essential because this saves you tons of time and money that you're not going to have to invest by bagging and boarding books that you're never going to sell. Your most prized possession when it comes to a comic collection business is 100% your time. Figure out your place in the comic chain of commerce and stick to it. Keep the books moving. It's all cyclical. Okay, that's all the preliminary tips. Let's get into the fun stuff. How to find them. How do we find these treasure troves of comic collections, no matter where you're at? Tip number three, be that guy. The truth of the matter is, if you want to maximize your opportunity of running across these possible gold mine collections, you need to let people know not only that you buy comic books, but that you sell them as well. You can't be a closet collector and expect to just get lucky when it comes to hunting comic collections. The first comic collection I ever bought ever was from a person that I already knew. It was an acquaintance of mine. I actually had beers with this person in the past and I had no idea he collected comics until way later, until I started being more vocal about it. You wanna see a few of the books that I still have that were in that collection? Ultimate Fallout 4, first appearance of Miles Morales and 9.4. Another copy and a 9.0 and a complete copy of Fantastic Four number five, first appearance of Doctor Doom. All three of these books were in that collection and it was from somebody I already knew. Number four is create ads. Ads are actually really effective and really cheap to get. One of the things I do is create ads and then I put them on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. These ads basically say, hey, I buy old comic collections. Here's my phone number and my email address. And there's nothing like getting a random text in the middle of the night saying, hey, I've got all these books here that I just found. I'm looking to get rid of them. Now, this method here led me to... And NYX number three, first appearance of Laura Kinney that I pretty much paid $10 for if you include all the other comics I bought in a lot. Tip number five, get business cards. Here's a look at one of my business cards. You can see it a little closer. The lighting might suck. 
but these are great just to hand out and I know it may seem a little weird but they work not many people are going out there and handing out business cards and if somebody has yours they're gonna remember it if they ever run into comics in the future one of the greatest tips you're gonna get in this entire video and I might be a fool for telling you this real estate brokerage buildings yep go to your local real estate offices take your business cards and put it in the hands of as many agents in your city as possible my main job is I do home inspection so I'm in constant workings with real estate agents and people buying their house and selling their house when people sell their house people need to move stuff when people need to move stuff people start to want to sell stuff and they start to part with things that's been sitting in their attics real estate agents are probably the most underutilized tool in getting comic collections in this business. It is essential and you can definitely benefit from it too. Just stay out of Louisiana. All right, number six is garage sales. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking, well, yeah, I go to garage sales all the time. You know, I drive by, I look for them. I'm talking about proactively going and looking for garage sales on Facebook Marketplace and messaging all of these sellers. Here's what I do. So I go to Facebook Marketplace, I look up garage sales near me, and I do a copy and paste of a message. And that message says, comic books, question mark. And I send that to at least 20 to 25 different garage sales that are going on in my area for that weekend. Now, out of that 20 or 25, I probably will get about one or two that are actually selling comic books. But most of the times, when I talked to them, they weren't even thinking about selling their comics before. It wasn't until I brought it up that they're like, yeah, actually, I think I do have some in the attic. This is a great way to attack the garage sale game. Talk to the person before you get there. Number seven is estate sales. So estate sales are definitely a great way to get comic books, but I'm going to give you another little tip to take it a bit further. So if you want to look for estate sales in your areas, you can go to, I think, estatesales.com or something like that and put in your email address and a keyword. From that point on, you will get an email if any estate sale pops up in your area that has the word comics in it. Now, what I've done before in the past is when I go to the estate sales, I bring my card with me. And every single estate sale has a coordinator, somebody that goes through and puts all this stuff together. If you give the coordinator of the estate sale your card, well then they'll know in the future, hey, I got a guy for comics now. That's less work that they have to do. And it's a direct link to you. So attack estate sales and bring your cards with you. Number eight, we got show up first. This is just a general rule for any comic book transaction that there is period i'm talking garage sales estate sales and collection buys if somebody is saying that they're going to sell their collection on facebook marketplace and you see that or on craigslist or they call you and they want to know when's the soonest you can get there you get there as soon as you can because they're not stopping at you they will ask other people and other people i promise will get there first all right number nine the final tip in finding buying flipping comic collections is basic negotiations. All right, this is going to be a few little bits of advice that all fall under the general statement of how to negotiate, but also how to conduct yourself when buying a comic book collection. And the most important thing in this step or this tip is respect the seller. One of the things that will often happen is the person that sells the books will have an emotional connection to either the books themselves or the previous owner of the books. And while you're flipping, they will talk to you about that and share with you their past experiences. When this happens, listen to them. Engage in conversation with them. Don't just forget to be a human being and get lost in searching through the books. It might be hard for them to let go of this stuff. Now, as I'm looking for books, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking at the frequency of key comics and condition. Nothing will cause you to overpay more than a rush job and you getting home realizing a collection's already been picked through or that the condition is actually garbage. There's a lot of prep knowledge-wise that goes into this before you even get to this negotiation part and knowing your key comic books is 
definitely one of them. It is your biggest weapon in this game of buying comic book collections. There's people out there that think that knowing more than somebody else in the transaction uh, and buying a comic collection for way less than what it's worth is like taking advantage of somebody. There is a fine line that you need to walk when it comes to buying a collection. You need to make the smartest deal for yourself. You cannot do a disservice to yourself, but you also can't completely steal from somebody. Now, with that being said, remember this as well. It is not your responsibility to educate somebody on the comic collection business. The most successful comic companies are led by collectors who have invested hours upon hours of either reading or research, and they know what keys to look for. This is their time and part of their lives that are invested in gaining this knowledge. It is not your responsibility to educate somebody else on what took you hours to days to years to obtain. Because every single person that has a comic book collection before they sell it to you has the internet at hand. And most people are fully capable of investing their time and looking up those books to find out the fair market value. The question is, will they invest their time? And the funny thing is, most people that are selling a comic collection really understand this general agreement when it comes to doing a transaction. The knowledge is power in this agreement. Two collections ago, one of the guys said, hey, hopefully I missed something. He knows that I could find something that I knew and he didn't. Let's say it's an older person. They don't have access of the internet. They don't have really the physical capability to bend over and search through a thousand books. And let's say you find something that is life-changing. We're talking a book that's tens of thousands of dollars. And you look around and you see this older lady who's just getting social security and struggling to get by. If you do not tell that woman that she's got a little gold mine on her hands, then you are 100% in the wrong, and that is where you cross that line of losing your integrity and borderline just being a bad person. So find that fine line of being a smart business person and being a good human being and walk it carefully. And one last sub tip before we cut this entire thing to a close, ask them what they want. Before you even, this is a typical negotiation for any kind of sales, straight up ask them what they want for the collection because that number might even be lower than what you had in mind and what you wanted to pay for it. And that's okay because this is still a business. And don't feel guilty just because you take pleasure in doing it. Please don't forget to check out the description links below for where I sell comics. And remember, if anybody calls you a dirty flipper, fuck them.